as we try to understand and grow in faith, as we listen to these words. <clears throat> Test. If you remember, two weeks ago, I preached about Jesus raising a person. Who was it? Lazarus. Okay. So you see, resurrection story that I just read was not the first time John talked about. Right? John, two weeks ago, told us about the resurrection of Lazarus, who was dead for four days. His sisters didn't want to, didn't even want to go to the tomb. But Jesus invited her and the congregation who were at their house. Let's go. And he stood by the tomb and called Lazarus, come on!
God's glory. But in the New Testament, God had a different set of standards. Looks like even God maybe learned something different. How to deal with sin. Rather than destruction, God chose to love. Love was defining his action. God chose to give the best God had. God chose to offer more than blue light special at the department store. This was a very, very sacrificial gift that God was offering for the humanity. And you know, Apostle Paul says, love conquers fears and sins. <clears throat> and somehow, in the New Testament reading of the Gospel, we find that God chose <clears throat> to deal with human sin, infirmity, and sin. Wayworthness, alienation, you name it, with love. Very different, isn't it? Very different. God showed love. So this morning, this morning, it is not a time to mourn, but time to celebrate. No morning mourning. It is time to celebrate. But let's look at what happened in the text. In the text, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb when it was still gone. It is something that you and I don't do. Because most cemeteries around here is probably locked. You probably can't go to any cemetery that early. Hmm? Unless you have a special request. But Mary Magdalene chose to come early. We don't know why. Maybe she just needed time away from her family and the community who was already in their house mourning. Because in many cultures, mourning is more than a day. In some tradition, it is 30 days. What is in the Filipino tradition? You have any? How long do you mourn? Okay, you are thinking. That's okay. Oh, huh? 40 days. And even after a month, family go together in some traditional cultures to sit around the tomb and talk to the one who is no longer with you. Whenever I visit home, Nagaland, I always try to visit my parents' tomb. Great. Talk to them. That just, it may sound strange to you, but that is part of our culture. I sit there and I talk to them. This morning, I came through Fear Head, and uh, there are people out there sitting on a picnic, one of those chairs with fresh cut flowers. Visiting. So I don't know whether that is what Mary was doing. But it is very
very obvious to me that Mary uh, wasn't expecting resurrection. You know why? If I, if Mary had believed what Jesus had already spoken, that there will be resurrection, and she came and saw the stone had been rolled away, she probably would have said, Hallelujah! It happened! Right? And she would probably even go and look and say, My God, you know, this is what he had been talking about. He's not there. He's not there. If, he, if she was holding an iPhone or a Blackberry, she would have taken a picture and then sent that text message to somebody. I tell you, I was there and here's the picture and he is not there. Right? Are you with me? But instead, from the farm, she saw, she ran. Maybe she was just scared. She ran. She wanted to go and talk to Peter. Tell Peter. Maybe, maybe she thought there was vandalism. It does happen. Even today, right? But in those days, they have two breakers. They would come and break the tomb. If the dead had jewelries, people will come and take them. And so I am just assuming. I'm just playing with the text. And sometimes you just have to play with the text. You have to bring the culture of the time and play with it. And so, you know, Mary saw the stone is somehow not in the right position. Maybe she just thought, hey, there was some vandalism here. There was some robbery here. And she might as well, instead of calling the sheriff's office, she decided to just ran. And guess what she says? They have taken away. They have taken away our Lord out of the tomb. And we have no idea where they have taken him. Yeah, right? It's, it's right there. So, you know, first, I'm assuming she did not believe second time around, you know, she saw the stone and then instead of seeing it all the way, she just had to leave for the third time. She was again just standing at the tomb and just crying, crying, not knowing. In verse 13, that was verse 11. In verse 13, two angels asked her, why she was weeping. She replied again, they have taken away my Lord and I do not know where they have laid him. So, when you read, when, when she repeats those, it just seems like she really wasn't expecting resurrection there, is it? <clears throat> there is some kind of doubt or maybe lack of understanding there. She was overcome by her grief and sorrow and overwhelmed. She could not even identify Jesus who was standing right in front of her. <laughs> 